Excuse me, Mama May audible, Ma'am? Yes, Chris. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Angelo Hernales, and I am, I am the for, first reporter of the Group 1. So, for today's reporting, we will talk about the different labor, laboratory apparatuses and their uses. So here's our objectives for today. The first one is to illustrate and discuss each given laboratory apparatus, apparatuses used in analy analytical chemistry that identify their own unique purposes. Then illustrate and discuss the periodic table of elements. Since it's this area reporting, uh, we use the actual pictures instead of using the, the ones we draw. For the first apparatus, uh, the graduated cylinder. This laboratory apparatus is commonly and routinely used inside the laboratory for measuring the volumes of liquids. The second one is the desiccator. Desiccator is used to store dried samples in a dry atmosphere. It should not be used to dry an object, <clears throat> but to maintain an already dried object definitely in a dry condition. A desiccator is also used in preserving moisture-sensitive items such as cobalt chloride paper. The third one is the syringes. Syringes are used in research lab for multiple tasks, including injection of gases or liquids into chromatographs, chemical apparatus, or animals. It can also range from precision micro syringes in expensive disposable units. The fourth one is the pipette. Pipette are, pipettes are laboratory apparatuses used uh, it is used to transport, transport a measured volume of liquid. Um, there, there are also different kinds of pipettes, and this picture is in, an example of volumetric pipette. Now I'm, pass, now I'm passing the stage to Ms. Guanzon to, to continue the reporting. Good morning, po. I uh, Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes. Yes. Hi, so for the next one is the puree. So it is used to dispense small volumes of liquids with high accuracy. Puree is an essential laboratory instrument commonly used in the titration process for quantitative analysis in many industrial chemical tests where solutions of known concentration are used to find the concentration of unknown solution. For the next one is the volumetric volumetric flask it is used for precise solution and precise dilutions and preparation of standard solution so a volumetric flask uh, is a piece of laboratory apparatus a type of laboratory flask calibrated to contain a precise volume at a certain temperature next for the next one is the Erlenmeyer flask so this laboratory apparatus is used for storage and is suitable for heating liquids. So it is a flask having a wide base, narrow neck, and conical form convenient in laboratory experimentation for swirling hands, uh, for swirling liquids by hands. Number eight is the Analytical balance. Analytical balances are highly sensitive blob instruments designed to accurately measure mass. They are meant to detect very fine increments, so they are very sensitive, so the slightest vibration or breeze can impact the results. Analytical balances should be used in a dedicated room with as few disturbances as possible. For the next reporter, I will be giving the virtual floor to Ms. Maralit. Thank you, Paul. So, good morning, everyone. Nine, laboratory thermometer. It is used for measuring the temperature of liquids during an experiment. The most commonly used measuring device or thermometer in the lab is the glass thermometer. Number 10, centrifuge. The centrifuge is used to separate liquid samples at high rates of speed. It offers a diverse range of applications for research lab, hospitals, or any facility that aims to separate materials from li liquid to sample, upper, sample preparations. Next, the cursey bell and cover. It is used to hold reactants during heating at high temperature. The crucible 
lid covers it to ensure that nothing enters and leaves during the reaction. Number 12, crucible tongs. It is used to hold crucibles and ev evaporating dishes and other laboratory equipments when it's hot, when it is hot or which cannot be touched with bare hands. Um, so I will now pass the virtual floor to Ms. Parat Chapo. Good morning, ma'am. For number 13, we have the test tubes. Test tubes are used by chemists to hold, mix, or heat small quantities of solid or liquid chemicals, especially for qualitative experiments and assays. A test tube, also known as a culture tube or a sample tube, is a common piece of laboratory glassware consisting of a finger-like length of glass or clear plastic tubing open at the top and close at the bottom. For number 14, sorry, we have the beaker. This laboratory apparatus is used to store, mix, and heat liquids in laboratories. Beaker is generally a cylindrical container with a flat bottom. Most also have a small beak to aid pouring. As shown in the picture, beakers are available in a wide range of sizes from, from one millimeter, I mean from one milliliter up to several liters. And for number 15, we have the hot plate. It is used in the laboratory to perform chemical reactions to heat samples and for numerous other activities. A hot plate is a portable self-contained small appliance cooktop that features one or more electric heating elements or gas burners. And for number 16, we have single pan balance. Excuse me. Single pan balance use a reference mass or substitute weight to determine the unknown mass of the object being weighed. Use a reference mass or substitute weight to determine the unknown mass of the object being weighed. For the next reporter, Ms. Mongoy. For number 17, the weighing bottles. Weighing bottles are scientific instruments that are used to weigh substances precisely. While the majority of the models are constructed of glass, there are also robust plastic alternatives. Weighing bottles are normally cylindrical with flat bottoms, though they come in a variety of shapes and profiles. The contents are kept unspoiled by impermeable seal stoopers on the top. For number 18, the filter paper. A filter paper is a semi permeable paper barrier perpendicular to a liquid or airflow. It's used to separate liquids or air from small particles, and it's used to separate solids from liquids in research labs. For number 19, the evaporating dish. These are used to evaporate excess solvents, most typical, typically water in order to obtain a concentrated solution or a solid precipitate of the dissolved component. With a Bunsen burner, heat the dish until only stable precipitate, including the silica component remains. So the, so Petri dish. Petri dish are often used in laboratories to research microorganisms. It's a shallow round glass with a cylindrical shape that's useful for cultivating cell, virus, bacteria, and other microorganism cultures. Other uses for these dishes include evaporating liquids to remove residue. Now for the next um, reporter, I will give it to Ms. I.C. Romualdo. Next, good morning, ma'am. Next page, Chris. The periodic table of elements. Next, Chris. Each row on the table is called a period. All the elements in a period have the same number of orbitals. This starts from one orbital at the top row to the seventh orbital at the bottom row. Each row increases by one orbital. Elements in the same period have similar physical properties. Each column on the table is called a group. All the elements in each group have the same number of electrons in their outer shell or which 
we also known as the valence electrons. Elements in the same group react with other elements in similar ways. Next. Next, Paulet Chris. Next page, Chris. The atomic number, the number at the top of each element box, is the number of protons in the nucleus and the number of electrons in the atom. The element symbol is an abbreviation of the element name. Some periodic tables do not include the same element names and only the symbols. The atomic weight is the average mass of the element's isotopes. It is the average number of all the protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Generally, the atomic mass increases as you move down or across each group or period. That would be all. Thank you. Okay, is that the end of the report? And then, no? Okay. Sige, wait lang. Ayaw sa iyan, share. Ha? Paki, ano good, Chris? Ayan. Yeah, ang Petri dish o ang social media. Wait lang din. Bali, huwag ko balhin na lang sa, sa first first na slide. I mean, dito na sa answers na good. Let's discuss them. Our quiz for this is Monday na lang next week, ha? Or you will have more time to study. Anyway, I believe you are familiar with this apparatus naman. So, itong activity one is just a review of your lesson in Chem 101 about the different laboratory apparatus. Pero medyo ano lang ito, konti lang ito compared dati. And we will just have a review also, a little review also of the periodic table. So mga common lang ito na pwede natin gamitin when we have our face-to-face -face laboratory experiment. So just like graduated cylinder. So do not forget, ha, I believe uh, some of you are familiar with this. Nakagamit na nito. Yung iba hindi ko lang alam. Pero since this is very common, so I believe nakakita na kayo ng ganito. As you can see, this one is a cylinder with a graduation. Yung mga linya-linya dyan, yan yung magiging volume. So this one is used to uh, measure volume of our liquids. Okay? Nagme-measure tayo ng volume ng ating liquid. Ang, it, ang importante lang talaga, talaga class is how are you going to read, uh, to read the measurement. Um, ang tandaan nyo, kapag ka clear yung liquid, again, ha clear yung liquid, you have to read it sa lower meniscus. Okay? So, for example, this one. Diba pag ilalagay nyo yung tubig dyan, Ayan. Siyempre, dili siya straight. Maka-curve siya. So, hanapin nyo yung lower meniscus dyan. Ito. Ito yung magiging reading. So, kung ano yung nakalagay na reading dyan, yun yung magiging volume ng liquid. That is for clear liquid. But kapag ka turbid yung liquid mo, or ano siya, very colored liquid siya, dito ka magre-read sa higher meniscus. Okay? Sa higher part ng curve okay, na nabuo when you place the liquid inside the graduated cylinder. So actually, this is not just for graduated cylinder. Uh, this method of reading is also true for the buree and also with the pipette. Okay, take note of that. Now, ito naman is called the desiccator. So ginagamit natin ito to dry our sample or to keep keep the sample out from moisture. So ilalagay natin, actually, hindi ito siya kompleto. Kapag ka makakakita kayo ng desiccator inside the lab, you will see may mga beads yan siya inside. Dito, dito na part. Ano yung bead na yun? Um, silica, uh, silica beads. Silica beads ang ilalagay dyan. 
inside, dito sa baba. Oops, okay. Ayan, dyan sa baba, silica beads. And I believe you are very familiar with the silica beads kasi pag bumibili kayo ng sapatos, di ba yung may, may maliit na something, tapos may nakalagay na hindi mo siya dapat kainin, may bilog-bilog inside. Um, that is actually an example of a silica bead. So the same actually yung ano, reason why silica beads are placed inside a desiccator and inside a shoebox or inside a... Ano yung mga products na nilalagyan ng silica? Yung dumibili tayo ng bag and even yung ibang drugs yung nakalagay sa bottle. Um, tapos pag kukunin natin may cotton or kung hindi cotton, meron ding yung nakalagay inside a white na lalagyan na may beads din sa loob. The same ang reason nun. That is to keep out moisture and to keep our um, chemical substances or our things not dry. Because remember, if there is a presence, if there is moisture, uh, mas prone siya sa degradation of the product and mas prone siya sa bacterial or other microorganism na contamination. So yun yung dahilan bakit nilalagay natin yung mga samples natin inside a desiccator with silica beads. Actually, pag meron din tayong gustong i-dry, hindi lang talaga to keep out moisture, no, pero yung mga samples natin na we want to dry, we can also place it inside the desiccator. Kasi mag-dry up siya um, immediately. Compared kung ilalagay lang natin siya sa table and hayaan lang natin siya. Mas mabilis because silica beads are known to absorb moisture. So, yeah, absorb ni silica beads yung moisture dyan. Any question about graduated cylinder and also the desiccator? Wale? Sure. So, let's move on. Ilagay siya mo next. Paki next daw, Chris. <laughs> Diliday siya mo next. Bisag ako na ang nag-control. And then, this is very common sa inyo as medical technologist. Siyempre, syringes. Um, pero kung sa analytical chemistry, syempre we don't do extraction of blood, um, we don't administer drug also, so hindi, yung, hindi yun ang gamit ni syringes for analytical chemistry. Ginagamit ito for carrying, carrying samples and then injecting the samples in a machine. So for example... Yung AAS, I don't know na mention ko ba yung AAS, Atomic Absorption Spectrophotometry, uh, na mag, magme-measure ng amount ng heavy metal in a sample. Pag ilagay na kasi natin yung sample, ini-introduce natin siya inside the machine using syringes. Okay? So yun yung gamit niya. To measure volume of liquids and to deliver it like sa mga machines and equipments natin inside the lab. And the pipette also is a long tube na ginagamit also either to contain our liquid or also to deliver. If we want to transfer a certain and accurate volume of liquid from one container to another, we can use the pipette. But you are yet to practice pa how to use the pipette kasi sa Chem 101, we just had the video on how to use it but you were not able to really learn na kayo mismo mag-learn how to use the pipette sa pag-measure pa lang ng liquid and then pag-transfer. I hope we can do that uh, if we are allowed na. Okay, next. Uh, you may butt in anytime hi, if you have questions or you can send your questions sa chat. And then we have the buree. Uh, take note, the buree is used to measure volumes of liquids also, but this is mostly used for titration. So for titration processes talaga ito, when we want to know the concentration of our sample, nagtatitrate tayo, and then that will be using the buret. And then the volumetric flask, just like all the other flasks, this is used to contain our liquid samples in the laboratory but unlike um, unlike the other flask class meron itong isang graduation only so isang guhit lang talaga ang makikita mo for the volumetric flask and yung guhit na, na makikita sa neck ng volumetric flask will be the 
volume of the liquid. So kung nakalagay dyan 1,000 ml volumetric flask, para lang talaga yan siya mag-measure and mag-contain ng up to 1,000 ml. Okay? And then meron din tayong maliliit na volumetric flask for ano, lower na volume. Meron tayong 100 ml and so on. Okay? Especially if we want to prepare our solutions, tapos accurate dapat yung volume. We use the volumetric flask. We don't use Earl and Mayer flask or even the beaker because the graduation for the both of them are not really accurate. Mas accurate pa si volumetric. That is volumetric flask has to remove letter N here. Okay? So again, next. Then we have the Erlen Mayer flask. This is used to contain also uh, and to store our liquid. Pero again, if you are going to conduct experiment in the la laboratory, do not ever use the Erlen Mayer flask to measure the volume. Though as you can see, meron yan siyang graduation. May mga linya-linya yan siya dyan with the corresponding reading of the volume. Pero hindi kasi yan accurate. So do not use this for measuring liquid. Uh, this is just used to contain or to store our liquids. And then sa laboratory, so ito yung pinadraw sa inyo sa activity number two. This is what you call the analytical balance. This is highly sensitive uh, compared to the other balances that we have. That even air can actually change the measurement, the, the mass of the substance. Therefore, we need we really need to close these doors here, sa side, and also above my meron din yun siyang door dyan. Before we'll read class the mass of the sample that we are ano, measuring. So, ilalagay natin sa gitna. And then this is precise, also accurate, also as you can see, it can read up to up to four decimal places. Ng mass na ating sample. Okay, next. Laboratory thermometer. So this is different from the thermometer that we use, pero actually mercury pa rin ito na thermometer. Yung ginagamit na body temp thermometer for, uh, na mercury, wala na yan siya, phase out na yan siya ngayon due to poisoning, but meron pa tayo yan sa laboratory. And this can actually measure high temperature, even very high temperature. We can even place this thermometer uh, while we are boiling a liquid. So kahit sumobra na 100 degrees Celsius, kaya niya pa rin i-measure yun. And then centrifuge is a machine used for separation. So we can separate liquid from a liquid or solid from a liquid or even gas. So ilalagay lang natin yung sample inside a small test tube and itong, naka, itong nasa loob na may takip na blue, yan yung mga test tubes na may laman ng sample na we want to separate. So ilalagay natin siya dyan and then we will set the, the speed of the rotation and also the time kung gaano ka... Ano, gaanong time ang kailangan natin to separate? Pwede natin yan siya dito iset sa, sa part na ito. And then, uh, magro-rotate yan yung liquid dyan. Most of the time, uh, the medical technologies use this in separating blood. So, mag-separate si serum after, after the rotation. But we have to make sure when using this, kailangan class puno talaga. Kahit isang test tube lang yung sample mo, kailangan mo pa rin lagyan ng test tubes yung ibang hole dyan. And lagyan mo na lang siya ng tubig na the same amount with that of your sample, for example, blood. Kasi masisira itong uh, kapag ka hindi pantay. And ang tendency, mababasag yung test tube inside. Again, kasi hindi pantay. Dapat pantay sila lahat. So, lagyan natin lahat ng test tube. Water na lang yung iba. Okay, next. And then, we have crucible and cover. Uh, ginagamit natin ito in heating liquids, especially if we need very high temperature. Hindi basta-basta nababasag si crucible and cover. We will just place the sample here inside. And we can actually subject this direct to a Bunsen burner, flame sa Bunsen burner, or we can even place this crucible and cover inside an oven. 
So it can really withstand high temperature. And the crucible tong is used to hold the crucibles and other glasswares in the laboratory, especially if, it, if they are hot. Siyempre, we cannot uh, hold the equipment or the apparatus with our bare hands kung masyado mainit. So ito yung ginagamit natin to hold. Hindi pwedeng gumamit ka lang ng basahan or anything. Baka mabasag pa, mahulog yung mga glasswares. Okay, next. And then we have the test tubes, you know, class, the use of the test tube. We have different sizes of test tube sa laboratory. This, this is used to hold our sample. Uh, we can even mix different chemicals here, small amount only. And we can also subject our chemicals inside the test tube for heating. And the tong beaker, the same use with the Erlenmeyer flask for holding our liquid samples or even not liquid. Basta lalagay natin dyan to store, to mix, or to even heat liquids in, lab, in the laboratory. Pero again, my graduation siya dyan, but you cannot use beaker in measuring the volume kasi hindi yan accurate. Okay, next. Next, hot plate. So, si hot plate is ginagamit natin for heating. So, like a substitute for Bunsen burner. Mahirap kasi si Bunsen burner kasi direct flame. So, makikita mo talaga yung apoy. Para, and para mas safe tayo, Gina, mas ginagamit na si hot plate ngayon sa laboratory for heating than the Bunsen burner. Okay? And then the single pan balance. So this is just a balance na kagaya ng ginagamit sa palengke in a way yung like kung bumili ka ng something sa palengke. That's the same thing, the single pan. Pero hindi siya ganun ka-accurate and hindi siya ganun ka-sensitive compared to the analytical balance. So, ginagamit natin siya for the other procedures pero sa analytical chem, parang hindi talaga siya natin pwedeng gamitin kasi we are talking about accuracy pag anak chem. Okay? Next. 20 lang ata ito, no? And then the weighing bottles, uh, we have this kasi yung nakasanayan ng mga estudyante pag nag-weigh, either ilagay sa papel. Kanabit tong papel na ginahimo, ginashape o box. Murag mo, o oh, ginahimo sa mga estudyante, pero may ba? Pero, pero let us consider class na safe, ang safety na to, no? Kasi there are chemical substances that will react sa paper. Um, and then, magkaroon pa ng spillage sa laboratory. So, yung safety and also the purity of our chemicals ma-jopardize. Ma ma so, kailangan natin gamitin itong mga weighing bottles that are available in the lab. And then, meron din silang closure, meron silang takip. So, para iwas contamination and spillage also. And then, we have the filter paper from the name itself. We are going to use this if we want to separate something. Pwede liquid and liquid, I sorry, liquid and solid, liquid and air, or gas, and so on. Or liquid and solid na. And then, evaporating dish from the name itself. If we want to evaporate, a liquid and then makuha natin yung solid part niya, we will just place it in, a, in an evaporating dish and then i-heat natin. We can use either the Bunsen burner or the hot plate for this. And this one is the Petri dish. Um, ginagamit natin ito for culture, uh, for our culture medium. Um, yung question ni Ayan kanina, ano yung question mo, Ayan? Wait lang, asa natin yung question? Hindi ako makita ga. So same lang yung culture media at saka Petri dish. Okay, si, si Culture Media Manggod um, is a Petri dish with the corresponding agar na kung saan pa, ipapatubo yung bacteria. So, hindi kasi basta-bastang Petri dish lang tapos ilagay natin si bacteria. Hindi, hindi natin makikita yung colonies. So, si Petri dish lang yung lalagyan, pero yung Culture Medium is yung um, agar nagagamitin sa pagpapatubo. So, uh, pag meron na kayong, I don't know if meron kayong microbio, ay, meron na kayong microbio ngayon, pero definitely you will have that subject. Ituturo sa inyo ano yung mga culture media na suitable for the different bacteria that we have. Kasi hindi sila lahat tutubo sa isang certain 
type of agar lang. And meron silang kanya-kanya. Okay, meron silang kanya-kanyang culture medium na kung saan tutubo sila and then makikita mo talaga yung colonies and makikita mo yung ka, ka, yung specific or yung unique characteristics ng bawat colonies. So kagaya ng uh, Staphylococcus aureus, uh, I forgot the name of the agar but I I guess it pwede siya ang tumubo sa maraming types ng agar pero makikita mo talaga yung yellow colonies niya or yung parang golden na colonies na bilog-bilog. Kaya nga siya tina tinawag na aureus kasi di ba our room is gold. So doon mo siya ilalagay. Ang petri dish lang yung mag-hold. Kasi ang gagawin niyo sa laboratory sa microbiome, magluluto kayo ng agar, yung culture medium. Lulutuin niyo yun, ilalagay niyo siya sa petri dish. After some time, titigas kasi yung agar. Kasi di ba liquid yun pag iluluto siya. Actually, powder yon tapos lalagay niyo sa water, iluluto siya through heating, and then after that, ipakukul down siya. After cooling down, titigas na yung agar. And dito niyo na, isaswab yung inyong bacteria or yung other microorganism. Kasi meron din tayong agar para sa mga fungi. Okay? So, kanya-kanya sila na culture medium. Petri dish lang yung mag-hold ng ating culture. Okay? I hope I answered your question. Sige, next. That's na na, no? Okay, periodic table na. What do you need to know sa periodic table? You review the names of the elements as well as their symbols. Okay? And also take note of the difference between the atomic number and the atomic mass. The atomic number is the smaller number that represents the number of protons. While the larger number, except for hydrogen, kasi 1-1 one, one sila pareho, the rest, mas malaki na talaga si atomic mass that represents both the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So I hope wala nang malilito saan si atomic number, saan si atomic mass. And also, um, you have to take note, alin dyan yung metal, alin yung mga non-metals. So itang part na ito, Ayan, lahat sila ay, ay kasama, yung, kasama itong nasa ilalim ha, lahat sila metals. Itong part na ito na iba ang color, ito yung tinatawag natin na metalloids. And the rest, after ng metalloid, including hydrogen, are our non-metals. Okay? Yan yung dapat yung tandaan. And another thing, yung grouping nila sa predictable. So, group 1A, again, is called alkali metals. Group 2A are the alkaline earth metals. Yung nasa gitna are our transition metals. Ang nasa baba yung rare earth metals, the lanthanide and the actinide. And then ito, the boron group. Ito, carbon group. Nitrogen group. And then, this is the chalcogen. Okay? Again, oxygen group is called the chalcogens. Chalcogens. And then, fluorine pa baba, we call them halogens. Halogens ito ha. And then, the last one are the noble gases. So, definitely, they are all gases. They don't react with other substances that much because they are stable. They have completed the octet rule. My next slide pa ba ito? Or wala na? Ah, okay. Ito lang. The difference between the groups and the period. Group ha, do not forget. Other name for group is family. And yan yung vertical na grouping sa periodic table. And that represents the valence electrons. Yung electrons na nasa outermost shell nila. Yan yung nire-represent ni group. So for example, group 1. Pag group 1, meaning yan, meron siyang 1 valence electron. And then yung horizontal pahiga, we call that period. And that represents the highest energy level occupied by the Electron. So kung nasa period 1 siya, like ni hydrogen and ni helium, isang energy level lang yung um, na-occupy ng electron or electrons nila. And that's true for the other period. Kung umabot na siya sa period 7, it means 7 uh, energy shells na din yung na-occupy ng mga 
electrons. And then itong atomic number and atomic weight na mention ko na siya kanina. Si atomic weight lang class para uniform tayo. Let us always um, round the atomic weights to the nearest whole number unless na lang kung given na talaga siya sa problem. Meron kasing ibang problem na binigay yung atomic ay yung molecular weight or yung atomic weight pero sinama yung decimal. So kung ano yung binigay sa problem, yun na, gamitin nyo yun kahit may decimal. Pero pag hindi binigay na kayo pa mismo yung magko-compute, uh, that's the time, mag-round off tayo sa nearest whole number. Okay, next. I think that's it. Okay, so that's it for activity number one. Just a little review of the apparatus and the periodic table. Any question? Wala? Sure na?